Welcome to the Depression Education Series. Although the technical term used by mental health professionals is major depressive disorder, I'll be using the terms depression, major depression, and major depressive disorder interchangeably in this series. Major depression is a common psychiatric disorder. Between 15 to 20 out of every 100 people, or 15 to 20 percent of the population, will experience at least one episode of major depression in their lifetime, and it's more common in females than males. Major depression is a treatable psychiatric disorder that is characterized by one or more depressive episodes. It differs from feeling blue or feeling down, which most people experience from time to time. In major depression, the symptoms are severe enough to interfere with a person's day-to-day -day functioning. People's experience with major depression varies. Some people describe it as a loss of energy or enthusiasm to do anything, while others have more severe symptoms and may describe their depression as constantly living with a feeling of impending doom. I'm going to talk about the symptoms of depression in part two of this series. In part three, I'll cover how a diagnosis is made and the course of the disorder. There's no simple explanation as to what causes depression. It can be caused by many factors which interact together to bring on the disorder, such as biological factors, stressful life events, and certain personality styles. I'm going to talk more about the causes of depression in part four of this series. There are treatments that help improve functioning and relieve many symptoms of depression. Recovery is possible. Finding the right treatment or combination of treatments can lead to improvements in symptoms and relationships, which in turn can lead to achievement of meaningful and fulfilling life goals. I'm going to talk about evidence-based psychosocial and medication treatments available in parts five and six of this series. In section seven, I'll cover less commonly used brain stimulation therapies, which are used for people who have not responded well to other types of treatment. And then we'll wrap up the series with a brief review of how family members and other caregivers can help in part eight. Join me next time to talk about the symptoms of major depressive disorder.